JBN, we keep you informed. Double murder in Crossroads, St. Andrew. A 63-year-old woman and a 27-year-old man were shot dead by gunmen in Lower St. Andrew on Saturday. The deceased have been identified as Beverly Brooks and O'Neill Grant, both residents of Friendship Lane in the Crossroad area. The police have not yet confirmed if the two were related. Reports are that about 5.30 a.m., the two were in their community when men armed with guns drove into the area. Further reports are that one of the men alighted from the vehicle and opened gunfire, hitting the two persons in the process, then went back into the vehicle and the group left the area. Residents who heard the loud explosions alerted the police, who, on arrival in the community, conducted a search during which the bodies of the two victims were found with bullet wounds. The bodies were later removed to the morgue. Bloody end to Igla clash in downtown Kingston. A recent dispute between Iglers on Chancery Lane in downtown Kingston ended with a woman requiring six stitches to close the wound to her head. This after another female vendor clouted her with a piece of board. The matter came up in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Friday before Parish Judge Chester Crooks we recommended that the parties involved seek mediation through the restorative justice system. Nadine Campbell and her spouse Daniel Williams are accused of wounding a fellow vendor during the fight. The court was told that the parties were involved in a heated argument during which Campbell picked up a piece of board and approached the now complainant. Both women argued for a while before Campbell reportedly used the board to clout the complainant about the head. Blood spewed thereafter. A report was made to the Kingston Central Police and Campbell and Williams were both arrested and charged. The police produced a video recording of the event in court, which was reviewed by Judge Crooks and a legal aid attorney. The defense argued that both women were armed with boards and that the accused was defending herself, but Judge Crooks had a different view of the matter. He said Campbell had left her stall to confront the complainant and seemed to be the aggressor in the melee. At the very least, the complainant was trying to ward her off. At first glance, I saw the complainant at her stall. The defendant is behind her and words are being exchanged, Judge Cook said. The involved parties agreed to accept mediation and are to return to court on October 18. 29-year-old man held under SO in Westmoreland slapped with rape and abduction charges. A 29-year-old man was arrested under the state of emergency regulations in Westmoreland, has been slapped with rape and abduction charges. The police say Ramanda Kerr, an upholster of Wharf Road, Smithfield, is suspected of being involved in several instances of sexual crimes in the parish. He was charged on Friday by detectives from the Savlamar Criminal Investigations Branch following what has been described as intense investigations that led him to being placed on an identification parade where he was positively identified. Kerr was brought before the court, where investigators updated the presiding judge on the status of the investigation. He is scheduled to face the Westmoreland Parish Court on Tuesday. Fake cop arrested, firearms seized. A man who pretended to be a law enforcement officer was arrested after he was found in possession of a firearm and ammunition on Lindale Avenue, Kingston 20 on Saturday. The Constant Spring Police report that they went to a sports bar about 11.45 p.m. as part of an operation. They say during a search of patrons, one Ruger 9mm pistol with a magazine containing eight 9mm rounds of ammunition was taken from the man's waistband. He attempted to mislead the police by telling them he's a member of the security forces and a licensed firearm holder. However, the police investigations proved this claim to be untrue. He was subsequently taken into custody in relation to the incident. His identity has been withheld at this time, pending further investigations. They must pay for killing my children. Broken father cries for justice for murdered family. More than a year after his two children and their mother were murdered, and their home set on fire in Mavis Bank in rural St. Andrew, 43-year-old Arnold Williams remains a broken man. Since the incident, the health and livelihood of the once avid farmer have taken a tumble and a pinched spinal nerve, which he said manifested itself after the stressful ordeal, adds anguish to his already sleepless nights. On July 18, 2018, 
Jamelia Leslie, 28, who is also the mother of another of William's children, reportedly murdered Kashif Jackson in a fit of jealousy with the aid of her brother, Javoni Leslie, who reportedly held the screaming woman down. Reports are that they then lit the house on fire with Jackson's children inside. Two-year-old Avery Williams and his seven-year-old sister, Aransa Williams, the mother and children perished. Last month, the brother and sister were sentenced to 88 years in prison for the stabbing and arson for the suffocation of Azari and Aranza. The sentences are to be served at the same time, which means that the Leslies will spend 36 years behind bars. This, however, has not gone down well with residents of Tower Hill or with Williams, whose elderly mother died the same day last month that the ruling was being handed down in the Supreme Court. Them children they get the whole 88 years. Because right now, them give them 36 years of the mother that them kill, 21 years of each child, and 10 years of the house that them light. But to me, is that them only going to serve the 36 years of the mother alone, argued Williams with a somber expression. So it is that them never get no time for the pitney them. Williams said the son he had with Jamelia is now living with her relatives. Since the incident, he had tattooed the names of his dead children and their mother in his arm. He drank himself into a stupor on his daughter's birthday last month and admits that he needs psychological help to effectively deal with his grief. His counselor is, however, located miles away in St. Andrew, and without a job, William said he cannot afford the $2,000 at each visit plus bus fare. Me ball every day because it's better me the dead, because I could have put a stop to it, he bewailed. Recalling months earlier when Jamelia tried to poison the young Avery by putting pesticide into the young boy's juice box. The police then begged me for lock her up and I begged for her. Now she come and kill the three of them. In August last year, me picked them bury and see him August this year again, me bury my mother, he whispered in reflection. Every night me go to my bed, me pray to God for dead and can't dead. Because of the pinch never can work like I used to before to support me youth them. And if me can't support them, no better me dead? Questioned the father, who is struggling to cover back to school expenses for four other children, ages 13, 10, 5, and 4. Since the incident, William's nearby farm has been reduced to bushes in some areas, as he cannot lift more than a gallon of water. This is tragic, as his community is jolt plagued and a steady water supply is almost non existent. He said that he barely supports himself by doing periodic delivery work. I don't want people to think I'm looking a handout. That's not what I want. All I want is a job so I can take care of my youths, said the broken father, noting that he recently applied but failed to secure a job as a driver at a morgue. I just want to provide for my youths, he stressed. Tara Long says auxiliary fees abolished, urges education for all. State Minister Orlando Terrellong saying that the Education Ministry has abolished the term auxiliary fees and replaced it with parent support contribution is calling for continued efforts in making education accessible and affordable to all. There are complaints that we receive every year at this time regarding what used to be called auxiliary fees and the Ministry has taken the policy position to not only abolish the term and replace it with words more representative of what the fees are and also to set certain guidelines for the contributions from parents, Tara Long said in a release yesterday. According to the state minister, a bulletin was distributed by the acting chief education officer, Winnie Berry, to all schools outlining the ministry's position on fees, disbursements, and additional resources for schools. Regarding the parent support contribution, the bulletin stated that students should not be denied entry to schools because of their parents' inability to pay. The policy is that contribution cannot be mandatory and must not be a requirement for registration, school access or attendance, or criteria for graduation, examination slips, application to sixth form, or access to any public service at a public educational institution. No more than $5,000 is allowed to be charged for registration packages for new students for this academic year. Schools should discuss and get approval from their regional director for the categories that will fall on the school payment voucher. Parents must not be forced to pay a contribution. Schools are asked not to combine the cost of consumables into the cost of packages and mandate payment from parents for the full cost. For example, a charge in packages for five school crests 
when the parent might not require or may not be able to afford five at once. Schools falling short of funds during the course of the year can write to the permanent secretary requesting consideration for additional support to close the deficit. This letter must be accompanied by all the supporting documentation and a reply will be provided within 10 working days of receipt. Terry Long further outlined that additional support is being allocated for students on the PATH program in an effort to make the educational system more equitable to all. He explained that changes are reportedly being made to the funding formula to increase financing for schools based on three factors. These are the low attainment level on entry, schools with students having the greatest level of difficulty in learning, and those with low socioeconomic backgrounds. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to like, subscribe, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.